We've all seen the videos of someone who's living out of a van that's nicer than some four-star hotel rooms, and they're in the most beautiful places in the world. And you're thinking to yourself, I, I can't afford a van, I can't afford a cabin, I can't afford land, I live in the city, what am I supposed to do? Over the years, I had to come up with some creative ways to experience the lifestyle that I was searching for with the things that I already had. So I thought I would try something new for this video, give you guys a little bit of a backstory as to how I came to have two tiny cabins. But my hope is that the takeaway is going to be yours, how you can live a rustic outdoor lifestyle wherever you are, even if you live in the city. My parents really made an effort to get us outside a lot. Our family cabin up here in northern Minnesota was a place that we spent a lot of time. There's just something about taking things a little bit slower and living simply that drew me in from a very young age. It wasn't till later when my family took us on a road trip out to Yellowstone National Park and the Grand Teton National Park that uh, I fell in love with nature and national parks and specifically mountains in the American West. Well, we made it. When it was time for college, I knew that I wanted to be in the mountains and decided to go to school at the University of Montana in Missoula. It was these next four years that really drew me further into a love of our national parks. My best friend Colton and I would explore Yellowstone and Glacier National Park, as well as all the beautiful places that were around us. And this would inevitably lead us to create our Emmy award-winning television show, Rock the Park. And the Emmy goes to Rock the Park. This was a dream come true for me. I got to spend six years traveling the country and the world, climbing mountains, rafting rivers, trekking across vast landscapes and seeing places that I had only dreamed about. As time went on, I realized how much I not only loved going on adventures in nature, but I loved just being in nature, taking life slower, living simply. Yet, I found myself living in Los Angeles, California. But I knew that I wanted to spend more time in the desert, in the mountains, and on the back roads. And so I had to think to myself, how can I do this? I'm living in LA, I can't afford to buy land, I can't afford to just rent Airbnbs all the time, I can't afford a van, so what am I gonna do? What I did have was my Subaru Outback, and with a few just simple tweaks, I turned that into what I call my mobile apartment. All it took was laying down the seats, putting a mattress down, hanging a few Christmas lights, and I had my own little camper that I could take anywhere. So if you're wanting a taste of that nomadic lifestyle, but you can't afford to buy a van, I urge you to take a look at your car and see if there's a way that you could camp out of that. It's gonna give you so much freedom and the ability to really get out there and learn what it takes to live this lifestyle. After years of traveling around in my car, I really began to miss that cabin atmosphere and lifestyle that I grew to love here in Minnesota. The dream was initially to build something on a trailer, but I was living in an apartment in LA still. I didn't have anywhere to park a trailer. I had nowhere to build it and I didn't have the money to. And so I had to think to myself, how can I truly make a portable cabin without a trailer? I stumbled upon this hub tent that has two rooms and sort of looks like a cabin. It was only $400 and so I decided to give it a shot. When I set this tent up for the first time, my mind was blown. I had a full bedroom where I was able to set up a cot and a nightstand. Then there was the living room where I was able to set up a couch, put up some tables, even bring in a propane fire bowl to have a uh, fireplace of sorts inside the cabin. I also had an entire camp kitchen that I was able to set up in a different tent that I called the kitchen cabin. All of this delivered that cabin atmosphere that I was looking for and it fit inside my closet in my apartment. 
So if you're someone that wants a little bit more space, maybe look into the tent route. You could either go with a hub tent like what I had, or even a canvas bell tent, and you can go set it up on public land, and it'll really give you that cabin, rustic lifestyle that you're looking for, and you're not gonna break the bank doing it. The whole setup took about an hour, hour and a half, and a little less to tear down. So it wasn't too bad, especially if you were gonna spend a few days out there. All right, really quick, I wanna talk about this week's sponsor, Gentle Bands. Gentle Bands knows that guys want to have something that sort of reflects our personality or our interests. Whether it's a wedding band or just a ring to show off who you are, there is going to be a style for you. One of the things that really drew me to Gentle Bands was their core values. They make all their rings here in the USA, and it's done so with sustainably sourced materials. Also, they use family-owned workshops. So you know you're gonna get someone who is really gonna take pride in crafting your ring down to the very smallest detail. So I wanna show you the ring that I picked out. This is tungsten and gold. The tungsten is dense and sturdy and the gold gives it a really nice highlight. Uh, what I really love about this ring though is it's kind of a modern take on a classic. I really, really like it. So guys, if you're looking for something new or ladies, you're looking for something maybe for your partner for Valentine's Day, head over to Gentle Bands and you can use my discount code JACK25 to receive 25% off your purchase. All right, back to the video. So finally, Riley and I got married and we decided to move out of California back to my home state of Minnesota. I knew it was the right decision, but I was very worried about being so far away from the mountains and the desert. Now we still weren't gonna own any land. We were gonna have to rent when we got there, but my parents still live on the eight acres of land that I grew up on. It's just a beautiful property with hills and forest and a creek and a pond. I knew that this was my opportunity to build a cabin of my own. The cabin turned out amazing and I'm so glad that it's as close to home as it is because I get to spend regular time there. You know, here I was thinking that I was going to miss the desert and the mountains and all that and I certainly do, but I get to spend more time in this cabin than I ever did in the mountains and the desert when I lived in California because it's there. It's so close to home and I'm able to go whenever I want. Do we have hot cocoa? We do have hot cocoa. Ah! <laughs> Do you want some? Cabins don't always have to be remote. They just have to be in a place that inspires you. A place where you can disconnect from the outside world. And so if you have a piece of land, maybe where you're living, that's not remote, but it has a little section of forest or somewhere that just like makes you feel good, hey, why not build a tiny cabin? It'll be a place that you get to enjoy frequently rather than something that's more remote that maybe you get to visit a few times a year. Now, eventually I wanted to marry those two concepts, the portable cabin and the tiny A-frame. And I decided that it was finally time to build a cabin on a trailer. Now I had a major limitation and that was my car. I drive a Subaru Outback. It's got a decent tow capacity, but nothing like a truck. So I had to be really intentional about the size and the weight of this cabin that I was building. And so that's why I ended up with the 32 square foot travel cabin that we have. Having that experience of building the A-frame and designing the interior gave me the confidence to be able to pack everything that we needed into such a tiny, tiny space. Now I had a cabin on wheels that I could tow anywhere I wanted. So if you're a creative person that wants to build a cabin but doesn't own the land to be able to put it on, maybe look into building a cabin on a trailer. It's always been the dream for me and I'm so happy to finally have it as a reality. So that's gonna do it, you guys. I hope from this video you can see all the different ways that you can spend more time in nature, living simply, living a rustic outdoor lifestyle with whatever you have, whether it's your car or a tent or a, a cabin that you build yourself or a cabin on a trailer. There's so many different ways to get out and experience this amazing lifestyle wherever you are. If 
you live in the city, if you live in the suburbs, or if you live in a remote area, there is an option for you. And I'm telling you, it's worth getting started. I cannot imagine my life without these places, without these cabins. And uh, it's been such an incredible blessing to me, to Riley, and it will be to our daughter when she's born. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for the video. If you liked it, let me know. Um, I'm thinking about doing more videos like this where we either talk about ways that you can get out and do things like what we're doing, or maybe just give you guys some more history and, and backstory to my life or Riley's life. Um, I'm looking forward to doing some new things on this channel. So if you liked it, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a blessed day and we will see you next time.